good hearing. No, I've got an attendance sheet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are you ready? I'd like to uh, call the uh, public hearing to order. We're having a public hearing the first uh, at nine o'clock because we have applied for a Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Grant Rebuild America program. The grant is funded with, by state funds and included and is as is included in the uh, 2019 capital bill. Since we had no line item for this in the current budget, we we're re required to have a meet, uh, open hearing so that we could receive comments from the public on on this grant. This grant is to be used for the roof repairs uh, at all on the courthouse, at least part of it. We have it sectioned off into several different phases, I think five, is that right Josh? And uh, the grant is due soon, and so in order to make ourselves eligible, this was necessary. So we allotted some time here, so if there are comments from that the public wishes to make, we would open the floor for the comments on our grant application. Is that, is that good, Josh? Sure. Yes. So, I guess you guys can talk for a few minutes and... So it's from the slate, uh, go back as a slate roof? Well, those, those things haven't been determined. <clears throat> okay. The amount of money that we're going to get on this first grant is only going to cover the phase one, as I understand it. Yes. And those would be the four roofs on the four corners, <clears throat> moving the infrastructure down uh, along the side of the building and making them whole so they do not leak and cause problems with the various offices like we had this spring. That'll be our first phase. Our phases beyond that will tie into uh, grant monies as bonds are sold um, and we'll go from there. Does that answer your question, Dan? Mm -hmm. How long do you think we well, ought to... Well, you're the only public here. Do you mind if we try to get a grant for a four house <laughs> road? That's great. You know, you can get. I don't hear any footsteps pounding up the stairs. Oh, wait, wait! wait. <laughs> oh, no action will need to be taken. We just... It's already it's been... It's an opportunity to make comments. Questions. Right, and we've already passed the grant application part of it anyway, so... Do you want to mention who we're going to work with for the grant application? Well, I was going to do that under okay. study session, okay. but sounds good. We are, I guess we can. Base Basingers is a architectural firm that Ori Cummins uh, put us onto, and just you know when you shop around, we had Arnie Johnson that was trying to work with us. And Basingers, we already have some familiarity with them through Ori, and they are 10% as opposed to 15% on, on architectural work. So we're looking at associating ourselves with them and exploring the different possibilities. Is that correct? If we get a grant, say for a million dollars, do we know at this point what percent we have to pay? Or are we going to pay 100% of it? Or, you know, how does that work? Okay. No, I mean, the, the first grant we're going to get is roughly for $250,000. We're on the hook for six... I mean, we have a budget for like 327, but we just want to make sure we spend the entire 250. Yes. So the 250 no comes money. to us. But what if on the second stage then? Well, we don't know what the grant we don't know what the grants are going to offer. We're assuming they will be construction only, is that correct? Well, it's 100% except for admin. Generally okay. speaking. All right. The so the admin's the only thing And admin up. usually runs how much? 10 to 15. 10 to 15. So if we get a million dollar budget 
or we get a million dollar grant, we're going to be on the hook for what, a hundred, hundred and fifty grand. Okay. Okay. Can you say based on what I, I lost, I lost you there? Million dollars, we're on the hook for one fifty. Explain that again. That would be for administration of the grant. In other words, to do all the paperwork, uh, keep the state auditors happy, all that stuff. Just like we do currently with projects through the uh, your office. Correct. In other words, when we get a the bridge down there, we have to hire who? Who do we normally we hire? Use Hiller for that. Yeah, we have an administrator. You got an architect. You got engineers, and those three categories. And the only one that's normally not covered is grant admin. And I don't want to correct Jeff. I'm not correcting Jeff because it's what we've said all, all along. We suspect that when it gets high enough, 10 to 15 percent up to 50 or 500,000, I'm guessing 35 to 50 would cover a million and a half grand. Okay, but I, I'd down. rather tell you high. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know. We it's, might have to, we'd have to negotiate. And it's kind of like the jail us. thing. They told us uh, it's going to be at least two weeks and it wound up being four days. That's better than having them tell us four days and having it be two weeks. Right. Now, John? Yeah, on the changing the architects, I understand the cost savings, and I'm sure you've already looked into this, but the previous one already had done a fair amount of leg work on it. We're on the hook for six grand with him. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, as having the previous leg work done, I assume that's not worth the extra 5% or you wouldn't have changed? One thing that we've discovered with Basinger is they're very innovative. For example, uh, both of these outfits thought that 750 or 800,000 might cover all of the roof to, as recently as two or three years ago. When it came to go time, uh, the board, I was told to, to talk to WJE, and the estimate almost doubled up to around 1.6. The reason we like Basinger is because if you look at their report, they have innovative approaches to include repairing the slate roof. Cost effective, I guess it, I guess it enlarges our options down the road. We go from one lump sum of 1.6 million to remove and replace it all, down to 160,000 to to repair the slate roof, 60000 to strip and paint the standing scene. So in discussions, we think, again, we're just putting a grant together. We haven't even started. Right. No, I, yeah. And putting a grant together. You just think they're going to be more willing to look at various options depending on how the money comes in. Jeff, you want to comment? Is that fair? Yeah, I, I think, you know, <laughs> okay. we, we're... A, they just, the first architects, I think, basically look at the place and says, oh, we'll just replace it. Okay? And what we're coming up with is a combination of replacement, they don't have it. renovation. So, okay? Yeah, they don't have that yet. Make sure when you look at that, remember you have a WJE report, and now this is a basic report, and quite contrast there. You'll, if, you, if you look at it closely, you'll see that they have more cost-effective ideas, let's just say. That's not going to say it won't work. And we've been told, I don't know if it's true, but I think we believe it. We've been told it's going to cost you $200,000 to get up there. So our minds are all clear. These flat roofs, you can, you've can, you seen one of them is fixed with a lift, and they're down close to the ground. But what we've been told, and what our understanding is today, unless someone teaches us otherwise, that you guys got to spend $200,000 to get to the roof. 200,000 in scaffolding just to get to the roof, general conditions. Kind of like a trip charge, only not from Springfield to here, but from the ground to where they can roof. Well, I've got to say, as long as we've been looking at the roof at the rate we're going, drone technology will probably be good enough that they can do the roof by the time we get there. That would be one hell of a drone. <laughs> Anyway, we're trying, our, our folks that work for us and with us are trying to be innovative. And we think we ought to take advantage of every opportunity. <clears throat> Especially since we've got an association with Ori, obviously Josh and 
and uh, our engineer have been with us a long time and they've done a pretty good job of being innovative and steering us in the right direction. So that's what we're looking at. Want to talk about the market? Or yeah. <laughs> Are we required to fill the whole time? So I just read your articles in the paper and then I'm all set. Andy, what time is our meeting with tomorrow? Nine o'clock. No, not that one. Yeah, whichever one. <laughs> with Sycamore. Sycamore, not, it's at nine o'clock. We've got another meeting at nine o'clock. Okay, I'll, I'll get with him. Remember, we talked on the phone. Yeah, um, I'll get with him on that then. Because I was what I, I got back with him. I said, "Oh, I, I, re I really like to move it at the time." But you could move it an hour later. That yeah, probably. I move it an hour later. Okay. So, uh, Andy, what was um, Kingwood doing on the rip last? <clears throat> there was. That I don't recall it was probably a year, pretty close to a year ago. We, yeah, I remember we were going to have him look at something. Well, he looked and we got a, uh, I got an estimate on it, and we said go ahead and fix it, and he finally did. Finally did it, <laughs> but it was. So good. it goes back to what we talked to him about the last year. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I didn't know if it's the same thing. There, there, there were some rod boards. And yeah, we just couldn't wait to. Couldn't wait to get it done. Because we had a lot of, well, not a lot, but we had some damage and it was getting yeah, worse. Yeah, it should have been done a year ago. Right? Yes. Yeah. True. And it had, I think it had seeped a little lately, but it hadn't leaked through or damaged anything yet. Well, not in the last two weeks, I'm sure it hadn't. Uh, yeah. I'm going to declare the uh, the hearing over. So if you, we've got a couple minutes till the special meeting if you need to go to the little or the restroom you can and we'll just start again in about 15 minutes after. Yep. Just, just okay. I mean, just, you just, if you want to move, 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 move or second, yeah. you're on. You yeah. Yeah. Would you all please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are. Uh, we have a special meeting to uh, deliberate over three things. Augie, would you call the roll? Certainly. Chick here. Ludington here. Patrick He's in the hall. He's in the hall. Back. Bruner here. Lorenzen here. Farnham here. Voigt here. Okay, we'll uh, move to public comment and rather than making Phil wait for the study session you're obviously welcome to stay I thought since we have the uh, highway department here uh, Phil we'd offer you the podium or if you're more comfortable to talk where you're at I can just stand and talk here appreciate the opportunity um, I guess the first thing I want to say if we ever have to go through another one of these power lines that comes through I really appreciate if they had a road agreement where they had to stay on certain roads in and certain roads back. That's been a tremendous problem down by us. They've been on every road down there. I've seen them. I know it's too late to really complain now, but there's no reason to tear up roads when they don't have to be on them. And they moved every piece of equipment up from gravel roads to the blacktop roads and they tore everything up, as Dad knows and some of you guys have down there seen it. I do appreciate the gravity put on our road the other day to make it so people won't be having a wreck due to the uh, way they put the roads up. I uh, hope the road is not left gravel very long after it gets construction done. I think, uh, you know, we started off with a blacktop road. I hope that's what it ends up with. This is all said and done. The other concern I have is the speed. All these trucks that's been down those roads, we do have a couple families with small children who live down our road and other roads in this area too. 
and the speed of these concrete trucks going down those roads, 60, 70 mile an hour, and my road is basically a one lane wide blacktop road. And honest to God, guys, it's lucky someone had been killed. And I've been into it with the construction manager four or five times over safety issues, overtaking their equipment over the roads without putting pads down. Um, I'm just here to let you guys be aware of what has happened with, I mean, no one watching. And I'm not the only concerned person down there. What they've done my personal property is another story, and I know you have no control over that, but it's just been, we have just been thrown under the bus and all this. So like I said, if we ever have to go through another power line, pipeline, um, wind farm, whatever, I just hope there's some way to keep trucks on certain roads and off roads because it's costing you guys a ton of money to let them drive all over down there. And I think we're deserving to have roads put back in the condition they were before they started. And we all pay taxes down there too, and all we're asking is for equal treatment of what we had before and what we'll have after. And that's basically what I've got to tell you. And I do appreciate the gravel we put down there. Now, when it gets to my ditch, I'm trying to mow the drill gravel for two miles with the big mower, that's another concern. But we'll go from there. Well, if you name it. Well, you yeah. <laughs> know. But we never got any, I could not get any con uh, cooperation with those construction guys. Um, you know, they parked everywhere, they turned around in my neighbor's yard with semis. Um, it's just no consideration at all. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. I know we have no control over it, but out of my curiosity, just for our information, I gather that you have had problems with that are not quite living up to the agreements on yes. your own personal property. Oh, um, um, yeah, I've got, I was supposed to have one tower put on me, I've got two. And the construction manager said, well, that might be a problem. I said, you're damn right, it's going to be a problem. You know? So that tells you, that tells you the things they've done is just, it looks like a construction company that has no idea what to do. They moved these, the, the pads dozens of times up and down the road instead of just moving them in and moving them out. Um, they had the big drilling machine on me. Instead of just going down the line, they went clear down around Becker's, and that means they're moving that machine three or four times on the same road or all the other roads instead of just moving once. Mr. So, and Mrs. Becker were here what uh, the last meeting? Yeah, I know he was. Okay, yeah. I just wanted you to know. Yeah. But no, and like I said, I've got two uh, pedestals on me. There's only supposed to be one, so that kind of tells you. Yeah, that seems like a good challenge. That kind of tells you a short, a short sentence right. that they didn't know really what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, but like I said, if we ever have to have these problems again, I hope they're just kept on certain roads to keep the cost of repairing all these roads at the minimum. And I don't expect them, the roads to be put back like they were until they're done, and I know they're starting to put some of the poles together out in the Kansas area, and they told me after the concrete cured for 45 days, they'd start putting the poles in and then string them off. And so, you know, I expect them to be done by early fall, so hopefully we can have some wood repairs done by before winter. And I, I, I just ask that I don't think we had to drive on a gravel road after having a blacktop road. I have a question. Don't we have, a, a, we in our road agreement, aren't they restricted to certain roads to begin yes. with? Yes. Well, they must not have been down there. They've been on every road. and. I'm not arguing with you, but they have been on every road down my way, and there's roads there on. There was no reason to be on. No, we're None. not. Yeah, we're not arguing. We don't. We don't want to argue about it. So, so we should have been watching them. Well, uh, that's my point. I don't want to watch anything ago, down there. Your department should be down there every day watching this, and they should know that you're watching because they're abusing the agreements that we've got. They I'm tore up miles of roads that they didn't have to tear up. We'll do what, at the board's pleasure. I mean, we can stop. Well, we already there. told you what our pleasure was yes. last meeting. We told you that we wanted monitors. somebody down there monitoring, taking pictures. Now, whether we can do anything, even if we see it, remains to be seen. Well, if they're not going by the agreement, and there are consequences to do that? It depends if there's damage. You said, let's get their license plate number and tell us if there's damage. We don't I saw have two truck drivers coming up from the south when I was going one day after I'd had a, I had a gentleman's agreement with Brent, the Cloucher construction manager, not to bring loaded trucks up from the south, down the narrowest part of our road. I was up mowing and about got run over for one. So 
needless to say, we had a little meeting right after that. And it's a, it'd be a significant gesture by the board if we were to change our focus and put our guys out there watching the roads. Well, you're just going to spend more money fixing the roads or turn up the be Well, hopefully we're not going to spend any money fixing roads. Right, They're right. supposed to, the agreement we have is they have to fix them and maintain them afterwards back to the conditions that we agreed to before the thing so absolutely well and we're going to be in a bind if they're taking loaded trucks down roads that they weren't contracted for and they have no contractual obligation to, to fix, fix. Right. That, that is a fucking problem yeah so whatever we need to do to make sure that is taken care of is an absolute priority would you agree i would i think I, what i'm saying is is i think it's uh extremely difficult there's four different crews i think right now running and it's extremely difficult to, to watch where they're driving for our yeah. i mean our guys are working we're all working so i mean as far as monitoring the, our best eyes are the constituents so well, not hard some well, i don't have time to sit and monitor but when they're in my almost right. my front yard when you when you say well, they're using all the roads is that primarily like heavy Everything. trucks, they're, trucks. They're, I mean, it's just also their personal uh, trucks they drive to work. I don't care about that. But right. this is semis, concrete right. trucks, the drilling rigs, everything. They've been everywhere. Some of those weigh about 80, 60, Oh, I bet 000. that, I don't know how much that big drilling rig costs. Right. I have no clue. Yeah, it's going to be more. It's going to be more. But then when I talked to the construction manager, he said, well, there's a lot of these truckers I can't get a hold of. And that, no, I just walked bullshit. away. I just walked away. Is it possible to go down and post the roads that are not on the road use agreement? We may not legally, but we could. Because just because where it says Cloucher Access Road doesn't mean that was the only roads they used. And I thought when they put those signs up, yeah. that was the access road to the construction site. But right. it obviously wasn't. So I, there again, I'm just asking to save, I know we're not going to save, it's not going to cost hopefully the county any money to repair these roads, but it would save Amron money or whoever's going to fix these roads money. So it's... If they fix them. If they do, well, if well, they don't, I want to be here every meeting from well, the next I 10 agree. years. We agree, we agree with you. Derek, did, would you have a part-time deputy that could be no. down here every other day or something? I mean, it'd probably be worth the money for the county to do that. We could try. That's what I was well, not we, we, what we can do. They'd need direction from the highway right. department to know what they're looking at. Know exactly which road. Yeah, yeah. they need to have the road use agreement, know which roads are. And not are just not just because the roads are being destroyed or torn up. The safety factor, the speed of these guys. And I know guys, they want to get these projects done. And you know, if I'm driving a truck, I'd probably be pushing the limit too. But honestly, when you're driving a concrete truck down past Andy's house <laughs> and our road at 60 mile an hour, there is no. There's no sense in that. That's just like the construction manager told me the other day after that five inch rain. Yeah. I said, couldn't you wait a, a day or two? He said, yeah. we can't wait. We've yeah. got a timeline. But they, there's consequences if we don't meet it. So we got to go. Well, after we so they us, don't care. After he went through us and cut down five feet through our field to make a super highway to get the trucks away from the mud, yeah. he said, I'm on a timeline. Well, then they took three days off and take every weekend off. So the timeline right. to me, there again, there's so many questions I don't get correct answers on. And that's just what I'm trying to convey to you guys this morning. You just got to get a level playing field for everybody. So in case this ever happens again, be more prepared. Monitor the road trips. Phil, I think you should understand, and this isn't an argument, but we, they didn't need a road use agreement with us. No. Their governing no. agency in the state. Well, if we hadn't it. done nothing, they would still be in here. Well, and I've testified in Springfield four different times from the ICC, so I know, but I'm just telling you, maybe down the road, just be more prepared on what can happen and what will happen. <laughs> I mean, How much visibility we, do we have to the construction timeline when they're doing things? Do we, are you able to interface and find out when certain things are expected to be happening. No, we there, like I said, there's four crews moving, and you know we our crews worked overtime Friday working on roads. I mean, just to give you, and I drove the entire system Friday. Well, it, it you had busy. to because the road was destroyed. You didn't want somebody having a wreck on Friday night down there because I know well a lot of people again, come down my road and they drive too fast and shouldn't be down there to begin with. When you got a road that's cut up so bad that it'll cut the undercutter of your car out, as Dan saw, mm -hmm. it wasn't safe to drive. So I understand why you were working overtime. You had to. Do legal load limits fall into this? 
Yes, always. Well, I guarantee you, every truck going down there is overloaded. So, um, you, I mean, if, if they're overloaded, would there be? You know, hey, we'll, we'll, we're not going to monitor you, but you either monitor yourself, or we're going we're to start pulling the trucks over. Because I walk that road south of my house. I have to have a, a, a law enforcement agency willing to do that. Okay. Well, I'm, sure. Yeah, I'm, sitting right I'm sure ISP would like to write those big heavy heads. Oh, I'm sure they will too. Mm -hmm. They trust yes. me. So they will jump. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want, I want them to get done and get the hell out. Well, of I want them out of the road. <laughs> but if, if what you're saying is they're causing problems and they're tearing stuff up, I guarantee you every one of those mixers is overloaded. And then, and those those big trucks that come down with, I've seen some of the stuff they bring in there. It goes past my house. It's way overloaded. So. And that's another thing. What happens, what happens after this winter, after the project's done, and some of those culverts down the road, and I'm not just not talking my road, I'm talking all the roads, because I've driven almost from Kansas all the way up to where they're at now. And say after this, the wintertime freeze and thaw, and the roads are going to buckle back up because they're not a thick road to begin with, who's responsible for that after they're gone? They are. They are. Aren't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, our job at the end of the project is to evaluate, make sure that we're comfortable with the settlement, what, what's going to happen on, as far as repairs. It, as, as, it's, as it's occurring daily, there's an interaction. If Josh is in charge of the project because I knew this was coming, but uh, there's an interaction with Josh, and my suggestion and observation, and really the only path forward that I can think of outside of stopping all of our summer work and like camping trucks out there, which is a that's what the board wants to do. Can do. Uh, it's for the constituency to say, hey, you know, I've got cement trucks running past my truck that I know are overloaded. Call us, and then he'll call Amron, and there'll be a resolution quickly. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, where there's not resolutions, where we know they're destroying the roads, and they say, well, we will fix them back when we're done. I mean, we can't, we don't want to go out and try to fix a road that they're currently well, how do we mitigate the safety issues that Phil's talking about? Well, we want to be careful not Trucks to Trucks hauling yeah. 50, 45, 50, 60 miles an hour down yeah. small, narrow roads is not acceptable in anybody's handbook. Well, Josh will be uh, communicating that after this meeting to Anna. We had a constituent complain about speed. But it's after the fact now. I mean, I'm just asking if this happens again to be more prepared. I mean, we had five years of crap. I don't know what else we've well, we done. Well, see, it, they didn't want to accept the road of use agreement that we negotiated three years ago. If we hadn't pressed them, Phil, we yeah, wouldn't I, have and any. I appreciate it, and I'm not. If, I'm just saying we could have written that. a perfect road use agreement, Phil, and they do what they did over in Douglas County and what they're doing here. You've got to have somebody, you both have to, you've got to do more than sign an agreement. Mm -hmm. You've actually got to believe in it and have somebody that cares about the agreement. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. And, and on Phil's point, for, I mean, let's forget about Ameren. But going forward in the future, let's say there's another big construction project in the county, can we put in the road use agreement a line item? that they pony up and pay for us having somebody on oversight. So if we had somebody from the county highway garage that was done, you know, like any other construction project when you oversee a contractor, could we have gotten, get the company to pay for us to have somebody down there 40 hours yeah, I, a week? I, I assume so. Watching? I, I mean, so, yeah. they wouldn't necessarily have to agree to it, but it would be kind of like a, a, a project administrator I think the, people have a misperception that we're not watching this. We we are we are out there. I mean, we just we can't cover. No, no, I know you are, and, and, and we're ground. and we're not slamming you for it. I'm just saying that, and if you had a road use agreement like that, and you could have somebody's salary dedicated to being down there for the duration of the project, that would make life a heck of a lot easier for you. Then I'm going to ask Josh to ask them if they'll do that moving forward and see what they'll say. How's that sound? And I don't even know. It's I probably too late for the Ameren project. But no, it's, it's got a reason. Well, we've still got, what, three well, four months left of it. Right. Well, why couldn't he drive one of the sheriff cars? Well, well, well I think we well, should. Well, I'd rather let Ameren pay the salary. Yeah. Right. 
Carl, Carl, go ahead, please. I think we need to monitor more by the because the highway department knows the rules and all that and the roads. And it wasn't heard for the sheriff to during the daytime have a squad car not spend all day down there, but you know, at least once a day or you know, whenever they're not busy, go down there and just be driving so they're seen to send a message maybe. And we know, Phil, that you're asking for the but there's things that could still happen that we'd like to avoid. Well, and that's why I'm just bringing it to your attention. Like I said, I'm not upset with anybody. I mean, I know construction projects and their messes and stuff, but this one to me has just been, and of course, you know, we, our group fought for years coming through the way they kind of just went across us, and I understand. But I just want you to be aware of what's actually going on. That's all I have. We so do that in other counties where they come in and do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It wouldn't be much of a power line if it wasn't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did, did they have an agreement with Doherty there on that corner? Are they renting part of that lot, or is that just where the... That's, no, that's just where they settled. I, I'd be pretty hot if I was him. Well, well and Dave's, his backyard. 80, you know, Dave's 83 years old, and I'm kind of his spokesman for him, too. I mean, but when you get a semi in his yard I, stuck yeah. because he just didn't take time to move another truck out of the way, they didn't have any consideration for him either. Hmm. And they know he's an old guy. Well, he just barrel him. Yeah. If, if we can go back just for a second, so I assume that at the very least when we're building those towers, when we're bringing in those trucks with that steel on it, um, that that's going to be another friction point, right? Where there are heavy loads well, on those. Well, I don't know. Safe now, safe. The, the trucks they were bringing them just a normal 40 foot semi flatbed bringing in the towers and they bolt them together. So the, I think the amount of the heavy equipment, heavy, heavy equipment, is probably over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I suppose they'll still cut the corners and break down the edge of the roads with the semis because those roads are never never really intended to have that kind of usage. Right. And as we proceed in the construction season, it's, you know, normally gets drier. Now you watch, now that I've said that, it'll be the wettest <laughs> spring. But they're the wettest wettest when they bring those poles in, I hope they're not coming past Chad Cornwell's house or Andy's house at 60 they miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are pretty heavy. And, and and long. Long. Not nearly as heavy as concrete trucks. Well, I guess my point was that if we could get some some help, if we know those days or roads that they aren't supposed to be on, if we were reaching out to the community, hey, we see a heavy truck on your road, take a picture, you know, let us know. That way, we have some proof going forward. That way, we can cover some of our bases and make sure that we're not caught with our pants down at the end of this when we have heavy damage to some of our roads. That If that's, that's a reasonable ask, then um, you know, I'll get a little bit else. So. And I know Derek's the representative from the Sheriff's Department here, but I'd also like to point out that the Sheriff does have to drive right through the heart of that to go home every day <laughs> and to go to work. You know, if you're looking for a, a set of eyes on the project, that's a pretty natural pair, I well, would think. It depends on where they are that day. Sure. That was a two week. Well, sure. Month period they were there. Right now they month well, period they're by your place. Yeah. You yeah. Know. yeah. No, and I understand we, that, we, but we you know, know there's different ways to drive to his house. Well, yeah. and if we know in advance where they're going to be month to month or every two weeks, then we can we can adjust accordingly. I mean that's not going to be a problem. Boy, we wish we knew that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I figured as much. Yeah. Well, Josh, you'll try to. You folks out at the highway will try to get a little bit more, I don't know, planned, a, a plan in front of you from Amron after you talk to them today? Isn't that what you okay. said you were going to? Talk on Friday. Huh? Talk on Friday, I'll talk to them today. Well, I thought you said you were going to call them after uh, this meeting. Probably going to, yeah. <coughs> we'll make a phone call after Right, this. and then, yeah. I mean, we need to let folks know who to call <laughs> If there's weight limit problems or if there's speed limit problems. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, we're not we're not uh, dodging that. If a constituent calls us, we'll respond. A constituent sees the truck going. What's the best nine. number for them to get you at? The four six five forty one thirty nine. Okay. Do what? Leave a message. Uh, yeah, if you don't get us, we're we're pretty short staffed. We've got a lot going on. So uh, uh, if you if you don't get a person, leave a message. Can you help spread that word in your neighborhood, Phil? Yeah, let's see, of course, about out of my neighborhood. And get a, yeah. and get a license plate number. Our suggestion is what Josh gets from Amron. If you see a vehicle of some sort on a road that you don't 
be in the road use agreement? Or you see an overweight vehicle? Well, that would have been, I'd have been sitting out there hours on end. I mean, it was a concrete truck every 20 minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I don't have time to do that. Okay. But if someone does, call. Oh. Yeah, we're just. Yeah, I know. Don't get a lawn chair and a in a pool drink and an umbrella. But if you see something, say say something to us. Like I say, I'm I'm just. We're not trying to put it on you. You've got enough like on you. I'm a constant complainer, but I'm just telling you what's going on. And well, no, you're not the only one complaining. That's the point. And the trouble is, it's not gotten any better over the last month. Are they almost done with the uh, concrete work, all the whole line? Actually, I was trying to get a percentage from them. They were about two and a half weeks ago. They were at fifty-one percent. So I was saying they're probably at least around seventy-five. Okay. I think he was hoping they would be done with all that by mid-July at the latest, if the weather cooperated. And then forty. Then they're going to then, then they're going to move to the towers. Yeah. They're over Which, in Elbridge Township now. Okay. So they're. Get well, not to state the obvious, but so we can fully expect that what has happened to you will happen to those people in Elmhurst right. Township right. now. So that word needs to get out to those individuals. Mm -hmm. The same thing that Phil, you wish yeah. you knew back yeah. then, well, you know, the as thing, far as license plates and, and the thing what. now, it is drier in part of the summer, right. so the roads hopefully right. won't be torn up as bad as it was in the wet part of the spring. Right. When we're down and while that's important, but, the but safety I, issue. The is safety the issue one. right now is the thing you really got to look at. Bill, thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it always. Is there any other public comment? Hello, Adam. Hi, Sam. This is something special. Yeah, this is special. Sorry, guys. We kind of rearranged things. Okay. Thank you, guys. We'll see you. Um, Sam, do you have anything to talk about? Either you or Adam on, uh, on the ambulance, or did you? Or are you just here to monitor us? Are you putting a committee together for Northern Anchor County, or how is that? Well, is that not right? yet. I mean, we I have to go through the we have to go through the process. The sixty we're in the sixty days right sure. now. Sure. Then, when the meeting is on July twentieth, <coughs> the public hearings. And then there's another 60 days in which uh, citizens and landowners up in that area could start a petition to stop the project. Okay? So we're, yes, but the simple answer to your question is no, we haven't yet, but we are going to get folks up there involved in a committee. Yes? That's all I have. Okay, that's fine. You guys have any questions for us? Gentlemen? Okay. How many uh, COVID cases have we got now? Six. I don't know. Six, the last I knew. I, I know that there was multiple positives over the weekend through contact tracings from those six, but I don't know what that means. That's all I heard. In oh, we'll see. I don't. Let's see if I've got anything. Are you doing the contact when you find out the ones that's positive and you check and see how many people have been around so forth? Yep. Who is responsible for the contact tracing? Is that the public health department? health department? That's what I thought. I don't have anything yet report from ESDA, so I don't have anything for you yet. So that's the health department's? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Saturday morning there was six. Two uh, younger than 18 and one adult. Five of them are all from one family, is my Okay. I don't know. I can't say. That's the gossip. It's not <coughs> confirmed because of the But tell me they've got five people. It would be nice to tell me where they came from. <laughs> so I don't go there, right? <laughs> Next investor. All right. No, question, no more questions for Sam or Adam? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is action on airport construction bids or related alternatives. Derek. So uh, Barry finally got word back in the state, and basically it was kind of what we what we all expected that that was that that is the price we underbid it. So um, you know I'm, I'm glad I appreciate everybody's patience with that, and just making sure that we had all the information and had all the options in front of us. But it looks like the the best and frankly the only option is to press forward. So 
Uh, I got an email this morning from Barry um, with um, part of their requirement with this um, higher bid, just an explanation letter. So um, we'll review that, but uh, my recommendation is we, we press and, and pay the higher price because well, there's not really another, there's not really a better option, unfortunately. So, is that in a form of a motion to uh, accept the resolution? I accept the uh, high bid we got. Oh, oh was it again, Derek? 400 uh, I don't have to recall. I'll second. Right. Over 400, wasn't it? Phil, uh, Phil seconds. Uh, 447? Okay. Or 477. I don't know which one. I'm sorry. This one. It's a lot. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Augie, would you call the roll on this? Chick. Here. Yes. Ludington. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Bruner. Yes. Lorenzen. Yes. Farnham. No. Okay. Next we have the resolution authorizing issuances of tax anticipation warrants. You have that copy in front of you. Don just wants to have this done so in case he needs it, uh, it's available to him. It's not to exceed 800 and where is it? 854,000. Currently we're operating under 500. Uh, we're able to uh, anticipate that amount of money. So he would like the uh, motion to pass so that he has that flexibility. And we have done this in most years past, haven't we? Is no, not no? not this in this, this amount. No. Amount. Yeah. No. Oh, oh this is normally five hundred a year, but we're Oh okay, we're extending it out. Yes. Gotcha. Does he feel confident this will more than over more to than more than until the taxes come in. Yeah. Questions? Motion? Second. Okay. Derek moves. Dan seconds. When you're ready. Chick? Yes. Ludington? Yes. Packet? Yes. Bruner? Yes. Lorenzen? Yes. Farnham? Yes. Okay. That is approved. Uh, the last item on the special meeting agenda is action on Sheriff's Committee recommendation regarding 911. Carl? your committee or uh, basically we are recommending to the board that we accept the recommendation of the 911 board to use the part of the jail that they built uh, previous and move all of their equipment and their operation back to the newer part or newest part of the jail uh, they have worked with staff. That's why Derek's here in case you have any questions. We obviously have Troy here and then we have the fire chief here. So Gates is here and Eads is here and uh, so we're, if we need to hear from them but we think it'll work best moving forward. So Derek do you have anything you want to yeah, I've shared with you, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask, but I've shared with you my feelings on it. I think it's the, I think it's the right move for right now. I think it's the best move to keep it in-house and move it back to where it's a little uh, safer uh, area, not to mention a more conducive area for long term. And you do have generally a plan worked out to how we can accommodate other issues in the front part of the jail, including attorney uh, client meetings or like the judges for pleading over the the system and all that yes, stuff? Yes, it'll be a work in progress. I mean, we'll have to we'll probably change it up as we go, but I think it we can make it work. Okay. Troy, do you have anything you wish to say? I, I appreciate the board's uh, uh, understanding and I agree with uh, Chief Deputy Weston. I think for it's the best choice for the time being under this conditions. Um, obviously, we'd like to look for a uh, a better situation, maybe five, ten years down the road, just if there was a public safety building or something that ever passed. But for now, we're investing over three hundred thousand dollars in brand new equipment for uh, the dispatchers. That equipment it takes up a little bit more room. 
Um, we want to change the environment for the dispatchers at the same time as we're updating that equipment. So the time, the timing was perfect to uh, to make this move at this at this time. We appreciate <coughs> any support that we have. Brian, did you have anything you wish to add? No, not to add. I just wanted to hear if there's any questions or concerns on it that would help me on our next meeting. Kind of face my yes, Danny. Is there a fee that 911 pays the county for dispatchers? I think I asked this before. No, say it again, please. Is there a fee that 911 pays the county for dispatching? There's not a fee. We have a intergovernmental agreement with 911, and. Carl, as our representative in the board, the 911 board looks at that on an annual basis and decides what is adequate and reasonable for 911 to reimburse the county for its for uh, its services. Okay, okay? Yeah. and Current, that's looked at annually. Yeah, currently it's I think 45 percent of the total cost of dispatch. Okay, I, just, well, I, I knew we I knew they paid something. I didn't contribute that much. Okay. Thanks. I just had a question about, so we have recently updated video equipment screens and the like, and I think a lot of that equipment is kind of behind the window there at the, the jailhouse. Is that going to remain there? Is that going to get transitioned back to 911 spaces, or what's the plan for that? Well, I believe some of it will get transitioned back there, uh, and some of it will stay up there. I mean, it'll be... Um, Basically unmonitored? Is yeah. Well, it, it'll be monitored. Everything's going to be monitored. That's not going to be it's currently be what's monitored now will be monitored back in the in the Dispatch. back part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those screens and the like will be transitioned back with everything else. Yeah. And yes. I think there'll still be some screens there because that's going to be where you know corrections and different people are going to hang out. So there'll be monitors at both places. Okay. There'll be monitors but, in both places. Not to mention, not to interrupt uh, Carl, but just to. With the judges, what we're trying to do with the pre-conferences and the pre-trials and stuff like that, and have them conducted at the court, uh, at the jail as opposed to here, so we don't have to transport inmates. So we'll probably have to put some other monitors up. So that'll be an ongoing thing. That'll be an ongoing process. So the expectation is that that room will now become basically the duty station of the jailers. So yes. that's, I mean, obviously they're not going to be there all the time. They have duties to fulfill, but they will yes. be in there the rest of the time. Yeah. Okay. And the approximate cost to move everything back to the back is roughly a hundred thousand uh, for everything. Uh, there's going to be additional costs because of everything getting moved around. You know, we're going to have to make some changes in the other parts of the jail, so there's going to be other costs, and that's something we need to discuss. You know, or have a discussion with 911 on who's going to. Come up with the expenses on that. Yeah, we and, do. And have it's going to be a lot less, but there's going to be some cost to different things. Uh, to that end, we are meeting tomorrow morning yes. with the sheriff's committee. Is going to be attending, and we did post that we will be there at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I think it's okay. and, and and we continue to work with the sheriff's department, the sheriff and the chief deputy, um, unfortunately not the sheriff's committee, I apologize, but we will do anything we can to help secure that facility, make it more secure, and also get it to where it's back to standards. Anything that we can legally help financially or um, administratively, we will support that. But I think, you know, now that with all the money that we spent, you know, in the jail part, you know, where this is a significant amount of money that 911 is going to be spending to move this. But in my opinion, this is fixing us, getting us set up for several years that we can continue to operate. Uh, you know, I've said all along, we don't need to build a new jail. For now, you know, on down the road maybe, but for now I think we're getting everything set up that we can continue for a few more years. and. Adequately operating fine. I mean, they're just, you know, that was my was one of my big things on the public safety. You know, the perception a lot of people had was, oh, we got to have a new jail. No, the insurance company vice president told me back in December. I said, if we build a new jail, can we be insured? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
it's administration. And they, he made that comment just the other day. You know, it's fine doing all this fixing up, but if you cannot run sure. this place and administratively and do things the right way, it will not work. No, I, and I agree that, you know, all majors should be taken to get us up to snuff in all aspects pertaining to that part of the, the city there and for the county. Um, you know, and we'll see once we get up and running, you know, what, what issue we need to run into that may be based on infrastructure or vice administration. So um, I think it's all, all the good. And if that moving in 911 will make us more efficient all together as far as our county corrections and, and uh, sheriff's department, I'm, I'm all for it. So. Well, and I think the other caveat that we didn't mention yet, the moving from the front to the back There'll be no interruption of 911 service. They'll still be able, you know, if they were to have to move to another facility or another building, you're talking, you know, where's the service going to go or, you know, how we got to still continue to handle 911 calls outside. And this way, everything still will be in house. They can still be constructing back there. They can still be working in front and we'll still be handling 911 calls. So. so it sounds like everybody involved is in favor with this or, you know, think they can work out and is the best way to do it so that's why it was important to have everybody here today. yeah motion to accept the recommendation so moved. Derek moves Andy seconds <clears throat> all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. opposed nay it carries unanimously uh, that uh, concludes the uh, agenda for the special meeting. Uh, I ex uh, accept the motion to adjourn. Derek moves. Andy seconds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. In about five minutes, we'll start the study. Well, why don't we start off with the jail? Is that all right? So, obviously, you will either through the mail or electronically you saw the uh, letter from the insurance company authorizing us and authorizing coverage to start as, you, as soon as we want to start operating and receiving prisoners in jail. Uh, they, would, they need to be notified at that time so that they can start coverage at that point. Uh, so Derek and I communicated and I thought maybe he update on what he thought and where he thought things were at. Well, we're in the process of trying to get staffing. Uh, Jay and Jeff have interviewed. They interviewed a couple guys last week, and I think we hired at least one. Probably have another on standby that is thinking about it. They've got interviews scheduled today and tomorrow as well. Um, so we're getting there. Um, I would look at probably. And I'm just throwing this out. Probably the second week in July will be run, and maybe 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 the first week, and maybe that third week. I'm, I'm kind of trying. I'm just. It's just how fast we can get some of these guys trained up that need trained up. But after the weekend we just had, we need to figure it out because we were busy all weekend. So. What uh, what are you looking at for staffing? I know some of these answers, but I'm asking. Everybody I, I wants think, to. Um, I think we're looking at at least eight and possibly nine. I think is the number they were they discussed. A question for Derek: What's uh, what's the plan on female prisoners? We've kind of talked about you know dragging their feet or keeping or. We have not. I've not. Jay is not. We have not talked about that. We talked about it a little bit, and yeah. you know he would like to figure something out, but I don't know. I think he's trying to. He's trying to get a couple of female correctional officers. We're trying to get a couple of females hired that would help. That would put us at three female correctional officers as opposed to just one. Yeah. So I think we we've talked about that. We're going to have a, a lot of this. We're going to have a female for 30 days. Um, because she was served in 30 days in no good time, and we're going to use her kind of as a training for everyone else in terms of moving her around, practicing the cell checks, and doing stuff like that. So I think we're probably we're working on that. Is all I can say on that. I mean, I don't know what Jay's feeling totally is on it, but uh, how did we handle with corrections? Because I know at one point 
we had said we were not going to handle female prisoners. I noticed in the authorization to start, start housing again, females are not mentioned. So what is Department of Corrections? I don't think know. Okay. I don't know. I, I wish I knew, but the Department of Corrections hasn't been very uh, forthcoming with a lot of things. They're still, serving. they're still issuing warrants for us to pick up prisoners, but they're not housing anybody. We have five right now that need to go to DOC, and we've had them since last year, and they haven't come and got them. And other jails have got the same problem. I'm trying to get on board with some other sheriffs and get some emails going to the DOC saying, hey, when are you going to come pick up your prisoners? Because the state of Illinois is not doing it. You know, and I think that through the Illinois Sheriff's Association, did they file a lawsuit against yes. the state? Yes, they have a lawsuit oh, against DOC because of that, because we're housing their prisoners for them. Right. Can we even, though they can, even though they can release 403 Class X felons because of COVID. So, do, you know, figure that out for me. I don't know. But, so we're still paying for them. Yes. We should be able to bill them. Right. So like that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, and especially, so, I mean, it's not like we don't have a straight cash receipt on what it's costing to keep them. Right. You know, if it was in our jail, you could argue it's already going, but mm -hmm. we're yeah. right to check. Where are they at? What's happening? Where are the female prisoners that we have? Oh, we don't have any females at this present time. Okay. Yeah. The, the DOC ones we have are all in Crawford County. Okay. And Crawford County's got five of Still, there are, still there are prisoners. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this transition on 911 is going to take a number of weeks to figure out. So some of the things that we need to do are, are pushed off into the future until that has they've got to move their stuff before we can get our stuff straightened away. Is that not correct? Uh, in terms of what stuff? The front. I mean, how we handle, how we, any changes we need to make physically to our, our, uh, yeah, uh, physically. Yeah, physically. Be, yeah, physically that'll, yeah. Because we'll that's, I just, get started. I just wanted, yeah, because yeah. 911 has got to do their thing before we can do our physical changes, correct? Correct. All right. Yes, John. A question of you. I have never heard the number. The insurance company is letting us open the jail back up, which is great. But what's it costing us on premiums? Well, it'll be prorated, and that's. It's only going to be for a few months. I think the difference was like sixty-three thousand that we didn't have to pay because we didn't house prisoners. But I can get that to you. Uh, I don't have the exact thoughts but uh, in and I, I don't know if I need the exact number now I'm just but as far as next time we have an insurance committee meeting it would be oh. nice to look that one over yeah and I mean it's if it was sixty thousand dollar premium and two-thirds of the year is shot then you know obviously the rest I'm just making this right. up but it'd be 20 grand so so we are going back under the same uh, policy same price fee structure as what we had That's correct. To. At this point, yes. And we also need to have a discussion real soon on what we're going to do as far as insurance for the JO and all that for next year. And to that end, um, Austin is preparing so we can meet soon. He's got five companies that are willing to talk to us about insuring. And then, Andy, you want to talk about what you're doing? Yeah, I got the, my carrier that I insure my business through. I said, "Hey, you interested in bidding on a, our county policy?" And he said, "Yeah, he he liked it, that opportunity." Um, I think this is enough time. Is it, what what day is it? November. November thirtieth. November is the last one. It's up. I mean, we need to bid this out. Yes. So I don't I, think there's I any said, question about that. I said we'll bring it up, but I. I'm, yeah, I'm more certain, than there here. Absolutely, I do that every three or four years. You know, somebody calls me and I say, "Yeah, here's what I got. If you can beat it, let me know." These guys saved me about half when I went with them. So I think it's a good idea to get an outside entity. Yeah. To give you. A, uh, and I guess another question is: Are we going to try to do this ourselves? We're going to go help with Diamond Brothers, or are we going to think about Bushu? <laughs> to help us with this. Yeah. We could always approach, like Carl says, Bushu, 
and have them handle just this, we could just, ask them. Yeah, not because not everything a, they did before. We had a, a annual contract at ten thousand, but you know, what would it cost just to do this jail and law enforcement and the whole county? Well, yeah, the liability policy. Right. We could we yeah. could contact them and or are we just going to do it like we've done in the past? Let Diamond Brothers. I think we need some professional help. My thoughts are, but. That's up to everybody. Need to be thinking about it and have the insurance committee meet and yep. talk about it, see what they want to do. Anybody, you all think that's reasonable? Yeah, I, I don't know that we need the outside help or not, but it's not unreasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Cause a little flat footed with us thinking about going back to Bushu. Uh, well, we, there may be a or somebody else. I don't. I know, and, have to and be I, I really do like the idea. I mean, we need to make sure we have our ducks in the row about what we're asking for. Yeah. But Diamond Brothers is representing several companies, and if we have another company that's willing to bid it on their on its own, you know, I'm not sure what else Bushu would bring to the table other than to make sure we. Would they charge us to do that? Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, there would be a charge. It wouldn't be the goodness of their heart, Dan. Right. They, they, they may not. Yeah, they may not want to do well, it. Well, they may not do it without a contract. I mean, right. I think that's the business that they're in, so. But I guess you just got to figure out is it worth. I don't know. I don't. 10000 a year. For if if year we've got done. more than one agency's bidding in, in order that we've got apples to apples and oranges and oranges. And the proper bid procedures that might be, I don't know. What about that guy? No, he just does fees. I was thinking about that guy that it was from here, but he doesn't do that kind of Bellwether thing. Bellwether guy. Yeah, Bellwether. I don't know whether they do that. I can ask him. Why don't you ask him? Oh. Instead of Bushu, we could, you know, at least ask yeah. somebody and get an idea. And that way we've got some hard figures. I mean, if it's going to cost us $20,000 to do it, think any of us and we don't want them to reinvent the wheel we just want to make sure we're doing everything that we can to protect ourselves right okay I just don't know that our situation has changed enough where you know, where we would need to reach out no we someone. may not Yeah, and I have a sneaky suspicion, and I don't know this, but given all the changes we've had in the jail and the law enforcement and in the last six months, I would think a, an outside insurance company would really rather look at what happens for a year before they mm -hmm. would write us a gravy policy. I don't know that, but that's my, I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to be stuck with who we have for a while. For another year. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, give it some time, we're going to be pretty boring, I hope. Yeah. Let's hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a boring year, and in a year we may actually... We need a track runs. record. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. We need to get through a, a couple of DOC uh, inspections. We need to get make sure our training's working right. All that stuff. Anything else on the jail right now? And I'll figure out. I'll, I'll talk to Jay and Jeff and what their feeling is on the females because I know we're, right now it's just trying to get the staffing and you know, we need to get that going. So. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to speak for the board, but my feeling is you know, mo no more female prisoners than we usually have. But, we keep putting them elsewhere to make our life easier on this end. Yeah, great. And that's and you're right. We don't get very many. We and I concur. Few, so, and it's the same. Let's say half a dozen. That might be a little bit high. It's the same half a dozen all the time. And of that half a dozen, three of them need to be in a mental ward somewhere. <laughs> and unfortunately, we don't have that either. Yeah. So, yeah. That's just what Can we quote you on? Oh, never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we won't tell your it's wife you said that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this new thing that's out of the hospital, that might be something that will help. Yeah. Absolutely, and I hope it does, and I hope they do get that up. But, you know, the only, I don't know that there will ever be a bed available for what we, I mean, we right. dealt with one. It'll be temporary. We, we dealt with one all afternoon yesterday, and that guy was from Missouri. 
and how he ended up here, I'll never understand mm -hmm. that. But yeah, he was on quite the bender, and he was definitely a guy that needed to be put somewhere. But we had absolutely nowhere to put him. But we figured it out. Ben was on Anything else under the jail or sheriff's department? Okay. Uh, Dan, do you have anything at this point? Uh, yeah, we had a meeting last Thank you, week. Derek. You're quite welcome. The health department and uh, yes. we have uh, three people from the uh, county fair board that came and, and talked yeah. to the health department and they kind of wanted to have the fair this fall. And Janet explained the restrictions that the implemented, and we let them make the decision. Well, the paper came out Saturday and more or less indicated that the health department had told them they could not have the fair, and that's not true. So um, I think that should be a retraction of the paper to the fact that the health department did not make that decision on the fair. And the number of cases in there kind of increasing, so you're putting all these people out there at the uh, fairgrounds in one spot, and I just don't think it's, and Janet explained that to them, what had to be done in order to have the fair, and I guess they made the decision later on not to have the fair. So. But the health part, health part did not tell them they could not have a fair. No one made that clear. So your understanding is they're not going to have the fair? Yeah, it was in the paper. They're not going to have a fair as such. They may have something later on, like in the grandstand, tractor pull and so forth. That's going to be later on in the fall. So. But right now, there's no fair in July like they normally would have. Yeah. And there will be 15 carnies camping out there for right. a week, just, yeah. just hanging out. So if you want to wear your mask and go away, uh, that's uh, where we stand now, and that's. I just want to make that clear that they did not make that decision. So. Okay. Any questions, Andy? No We're hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the only reason why I haven't been there. Um, Smartwatch getting ready to wrap, basically wrap up their. Everything that we've gone through with them. Yeah, Chuck was here last week, went through things. <clears throat> He'll be, I think he's going to be here tomorrow. If not, I know that Sycamore Engineering is going to be here uh, and try to, <clears throat> I'll, I'll verify times with people, but I wanted to be there when they did it, instruct us on how to use the system. I talked to John this morning. I know people have had trouble with it. Part of it is those are the settings that Sycamore has, uh, that SmartWalt has dictated to Sycamore that the, they want this system set at. And John assured me that tomorrow after we go through our meeting with SmartWalt, he, he is going to reset the, the system so that it's gonna work according to how people want it in their office. Um, he goes, it reverts back because it, that's, that's part of the contract that Sycamore has with SmartWalk. That's what they'll set it at. So tomorrow is the last day that SmartWalk will be involved with it. So he said he's going to come in in the afternoon, reset the system, and have it to where it operates. Well, we're paying to heat this place when we shouldn't be paying to right. heat it. And I, are we going to get any credit for that since well, they haven't set the system? I, I don't know that it's heating it as much as it's not turning the cooling off. Have we got heat coming out? It's, it feels like heat. Well, it says heat on the thermostat, Andy. It says heat. Well, I told it John says that this morning. auto heat, and when I walked in this morning, it was heat. heat was blasting out of my register. It was yeah. The one out here by the elevator, when I walked no, in, I just both the both elevator are. floor. Yeah. So, yeah. They're both heat. And I'm going to go, I, yeah. Angie says I, I told too. him this high. Angie's office, the courtrooms, it was blowing heat this morning. I turned it to cool so you guys wouldn't be so hot. I, I don't know why. Well, I just think they'll be they here should, tomorrow. You know, we've this isn't the first time we have asked them. In fact, when we met that guy when we were looking at the units on the porches, you remember he said he was here to to uh, check that check that and get everything in sync. And obviously that did not happen. All right. 
Dan? Is there a master control for that? Yeah. One, one spot that one person can set the whole thing in the courthouse? That how it works. Well, it can, yeah. I mean, you you, you pull it up, and it's a, it's a computer screen, and you can okay. check can, different boxes. Each, like, uh, Augie can adjust his office. He does. He can do his in his office. Okay, that's what I mean. But is that true of all the offices? Yes. Okay. Except the atrium. Can adjust it so many degrees each way? Is um, there a limit? There is a limit. There. Five. Five. Five either way, I believe. Isn't so that? You guys that's what yeah. the guy told us. Well, yeah. Now on the same subject, Dan, how's the uh, public health been with all the system uh, that they have? I've been really, again, did not say anything. I know the chillers went down. I was going to ask the question yeah. if the smart one was going to help pay for the replace the chillers. No. Okay. Um, I was in a meeting when with Sycamore uh, before smart before we all decided on SmartWatt and whether Janet would go along with it or not. And I forget what the guy's name is, big guy with big overalls anyway. And he said, he goes, I'm, I just want to make it clear to you, you understand the situation on your chiller. He goes, we're on borrowed time on that chiller right now. He goes, it could make it another two or three years. It could go down at any time. And that was the spring. Yeah. Because well, we, we've just, been patching it for years. Right, right. Why wasn't that part of the smart watch? Like, that's my point. Like, just like the um, furnace was at the jail. Like, do you know? I don't. I don't remember. I don't ever remember that part being discussed. The only thing I recall, when it pertains, as it pertains to the health department, is that that system was an old system. It wasn't necessarily about the chillers. It was the blower system. Right. And they had some controls that weren't efficient with what they had, but it was never mentioned about the chillers. Now, I don't know if that's no efficiency to be gained, and therefore it doesn't make sense. I think, I think that's probably, I mean, they're going to re basically replace, the, all the efficiency was in, I mean, the, the, you were still operating it like the, the old clinic was set up. Right. The registers were in the places where you had different offices, right. and, and they've changed all those offices around. Right. So, um, so it just didn't make sense from an efficiency well, standpoint for them to include For them that to that include that. that. I got it. Yeah, if the chiller goes out, they're going to replace it with the same chiller, so it's not a... Right. Well, it should have been replaced when we did the furnace, replace the furnace. They still went ahead and replaced the chiller, but they didn't. So. Yeah, they spent a bunch of money here, what, two years ago, three On years ago? Right. What, half a million dollars or something? Was, yeah, they yeah. spent a quarter, quarter million. I okay, thought. well, whatever. I knew it was a lot. It was. But you haven't heard any complaints about Jane, I mean, other than the children going out, which right. we know that everything well, and that is, that, otherwise I think would be done with smart one at right. this point, but they, they have some things that they need to do, but they have to get that chiller fixed before they can adjust yeah. and do things. No, she said the same thing, so. Okay. Did you, you didn't walk around in there when you were there? No. Okay. no. 7 o'clock in the morning, down half sleep and everything. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> A little bit early for me. <laughs> Phil, John, Derek, me, Carl, Augie. Uh, update. Last Thursday, I handed the uh, real estate tax levies over to Don. So I'm done with it all now, and he is in the process of running the bills and reviewing. So. I don't know what his time frame is. Uh, but normally, he likes to take anywhere from up to two weeks, and put it that way, to to look things over, get get all the bills ready to be mailed and whatnot. So we're getting closer to that. Yes, sir. Uh, I got champagne paper, and they got their tax bills, and they were due on. I don't know if I read it or not, but they were due on June the first. And the person, the assessor, or whatever, taking care of that, his computers weren't working right, so they were paying by June first, but they were getting over or uh, penalties for not paying on time because it took him two weeks to go through and say they paid the bill or not. So we should be complimented here for extending the time that uh, you got to pay your bill. Because up there, that'd be done by June the first, or there was a penalty. So I think we should be complimented on extending the time they can make the payments. So. That's just the point. Okay. Thank you.
I'll compliment you on that. Yeah, yeah. good job, yeah. boy. Yeah. Well, I must want to make a comment that makes sense. <laughs> is, that, is that one of them? Put that in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten about that. <laughs> Anything else to come before the study session this morning? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So move. Okay. Derek, Dan, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. We're adjourned.